Wow, that is a lot of food dye. It uh, is. We apparently only go big. <laughs> I thought we'd play around a little and see where each of these things shine. Um, we have several different kinds of food dye here that we can play around with today. Okay. Um, so I see, okay, we have different brands. Yes. Uh, so I see this is McCormick. Yes. Uh, and this is like grocery store. Like yes, you... you can find that in any grocery store as well as this um, Wilton gel dye. Okay, so that's Wilton. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard of them, they do cake stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, And then we have Americolor. Yes, Americolor's another gel dye. Um, and you can find this at craft stores or in cake specialty stores. Okay, cake specialty stores. It's my favorite store. Uh, it sounds like it, yeah. Uh, and then Loran. Yes, um, this is their powder dye. They make other kinds as well, but um, their powder food dye you can is a special order online. Um, but you could find it in a cake store as well, I think. Okay, so, oh, and then we have, we have one more. Um, this is Suncor Foods. Yes, these are all natural food dyes. Natural, so this one is like leaves. Yes. Um, and then there's... So these are all derived from foods, things like purple sweet potato and beets. Yum. <laughs> We're gonna try them out and see. Okay, fair enough. I, I, that's a good idea. We should try things before we poo-poo them. Yes. All right. Then we should poo-poo them. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and there's different brands, but not just different brands, there's different styles. So like these are powders. Yes. Those are gels. Yes, so this guess, is liquid, okay. um, I assume water-based. Okay, so we're gonna kind of figure out right. what's good for when and, yes. and how they stack up. Yeah. Awesome, let's get started. Okay. So I know nothing about dyes. So yeah. we're gonna take the same color. In this case, we're gonna do red. And I just wanna add dye to the same stuff and just see how it works. What happens when you add more? Uh, what happens to the color? Do we have different types of dyes? We've got powders, we've got gels. Uh, what, what happens? What are the differences there and how does that look? Sure. So I have made a batch of buttercream and I've divided it out into 50 gram containers each so that we can experiment with the types of dye that we have. So we'll have a cup of 50 grams of buttercream, we'll add dye uh, slowly to it, um, multiplying, doubling the dye each time. And we'll take little samples as we go. Now one thing that you may not know is that dye, the color of the icing and the dye changes over time. It will intensify over time with some dyes. So we also kind of want to look at this over time as well. Well, that'll keep this really super complicated. It will. Uh, great, just what I was hoping for. Nice, simple, <laughs> simple experiment. I'm glad you're here to basically do it for me. Thank great, you. perfect. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Yeah, let's with start with the McCormick. The McCormick, okay. So I'm gonna start by, with the 50 grams of icing, just adding one drop of the McCormick so that uh, we can see how it goes. All right, one drop of red. One that does drop not of... look like very much. It doesn't look like very much, no. Let's see what it does. Okay. It obviously changed it fairly significantly. Yeah, that's pretty pink. That's pretty pink, yes. Okay. And of course you would expect that from a red dye in low concentration to turn out pink, right? I'll say yes. <laughs> well, white and pink, if you were mixing oh, paint, white, white or and white and red, you would, if you were mixing okay. paint, would, sure. would make pink. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to just take a little bit of this, and I'm gonna smear it here. So we can get an idea of what one drop looks like compared to the others. So now I'm going to double this, and this will be two drops but once I add the second one. It has one drop, and I'm adding another. Okay, good, yes. That makes sense. I'm with you. <laughs> you and me, we're together on this. Okay, all right, yeah, that's definitely getting darker. Still pretty pink, though. It's very pink. If I had to put a name on that color, I would describe it as Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> or bubblegum, yes. Bubblegum, okay, that's probably a nicer. I'm doubling it again, so I'm adding two more drops to make a total of four. Okay, so I've brought out uh, the red swing line stapler. Uh, we like the red because it doesn't bind up as much. This is just to give you a color reference of general proportions because we can't guarantee that you're gonna see on a calibrated monitor exactly how this is gonna look, but yeah, you probably have a good general understanding of how red this uh, stapler is going to be. The main point of this is not necessarily to understand exactly, oh, this is exactly what two drops of uh, this dye looks like, but more just relative, how it goes from one to two to four. Okay, this is four. That is still very pink. It's still very pink. I see it intensifying, it's, but it's, it's still very pink. It's getting intensely pink. pink. <laughs> 
So now we're dribbling, there are four drops in the cup and I'm going to double that to a total of eight drops by adding four drops again. All right, four doubled is eight. Hmm, it's, it's cooking and a math lesson. <laughs> We get two credits on this class. Now I've noticed that this McCormick dye, it's uh, water-based and the consistency of my icing is beginning to change. It's getting uh, much softer. So uh, that may not be a desirable result for you. That's uh, for you to decide, but uh, it is changing the consistency of the icing. So I think if you were going for true swing line red, you might not uh, appreciate the texture of the icing by the time you got there. Oh, I see. You just keep, you keep pour adding, it in enough to yes, get dark enough. Yes, enough drops to get dark, to turn red, mm. red, then. It's gonna just be yeah. liquidy. Okay, that is still very pink. It's still very pink. But this is our first shot. Yeah, maybe they're so all that way, I don't know. Maybe they're all that way. Uh, so we wanna go on to the Wilton. So we're gonna do the same thing with the Wilton. This is a gel dye, um, but it comes in a squeezy bottle like the McCormick. This is one drop in 50 grams of buttercream. Okay, that looks almost black in that drop. <laughs> it did, it had a lot of pigment in it, didn't it? Yeah, wow. Just right away, even after one drop. Yes, I'm, I mean, I'm looking at this in comparison to that and we're already... We're already beyond, beyond the eight drops. Beyond what eight drops of, of McCormick of can McCormick. do. Okay, I, uh, so you don't want this on your clothes? Probably not, okay. um, I wouldn't guess. It will come off your skin eventually, <laughs> unlike Sharpie. Eventually, but... <laughs> six weeks to never. Okay, so that's one drop of the Wilton gel. That's adding another drop to make it two total. Okay, yeah. That is notably more red already. Yes, already. Doubling again to four drops means I add two. I still can't get over how dark <laughs> those <laughs> drops are. Is the texture staying okay? The texture seems to be fine. I don't okay. see it loosening, uh, definitely not as much as the McCormick. I'm kind of scared where this is going with eight drops. <laughs> right, this is this is four drops, we'll double it again. So I'll be adding four drops to this. Close this up before there's an incident. <laughs> when I'm around, you know there might be an incident. So this has become very vibrant. Yeah. And I would say we are getting very close to red now. I like it. Now the question is, in my mind when I see this, is is this this deep because of the brand, Wilton, or is it this deep because of the gel and that's just a difference in right, gel dyes? Right, right. And gel dyes do tend to be better, but let's see okay. if there is a difference between Americolor and Wilton. Okay, this is Americolor. This is Americolor. I'll start with the one drop. This is a very thick mm. gel, so sometimes those drops don't release very easily, as easily as the Wilton. And there's different colors of red even within some of these brands, so this I'm is... I'm sure there will be, yes. Some will be more blue, some will be more orange, but... this but... is Americolor Super Red. Is... In fact, Americolor, I think, sells four different types of red, just depending on which tone you're going for. And how you're feeling that day. And how you're feeling that day. Maybe it's an orange-red kind of day. Somewhat comparable, I think. Yeah, it looks very similar. The one drop of Wilton. This will be... I'm adding one more drop to make a total of two. Mm, that seems maybe a little darker. Maybe a little Wilton. darker. It's, it's almost up to the almost four drops the of the Wilton, isn't it? Wilton. All right, so um, I'm adding two more for a total of four. Yeah, those are bigger drops. <laughs> those, those drops aren't messing around. Wow, this is getting so red. I'm just not even sure about adding four more drops. Four mega drops. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, four more drops. <laughs> Let's see, can, what happens if you go beyond red? Does it go to plaid or anything? <laughs> no, it can actually oversaturate the icing and you'll end up with kind of a mottled, separated look, um, which is obviously not ideal, which is a vote for when you're not doing an experiment where you've set out the number of drops that you're going to use uh, for just, you know, going slowly, add one or two at a time and move forward from there uh, until you reach the point that you are looking for. Yeah, you may have stopped at four drops yes. and not continued on to what some may call ridiculous. Yes. This red. That is incredibly saturated. Okay, so that is very red. It is indeed. While you're cleaning that up, yeah. we've got two more. So now we're switching to powders. These are very different, so let's see. Do you need help getting that open? Or? I don't think so. You're probably right. And, okay. And honestly, what kind of help would I be? So this is a powder. It's a loose powder in a jar. And we can't measure this in drops. So the way I'm going to do it is just with the tip of my knife. Um, and I'll just add what fits on the tip of my knife into the bowl and stir. 
Okay, that. This is surprising. One thing I had heard about powdered dyes is that they offer vibrancy without adding liquid when liquid would be not called for, but wow, that's not very intense. Vibrant is not the word I would use. <laughs> uh, it's a nice blush pink. And yeah, it has red. Red little streaks little, in it from the powder. Little streaks from the powder not being fully dispersed and dissolved. Okay, so okay. another knife tip. Another knife tip. That's not really deepening toward the red. That is deepening uh, toward pink again. Yes, I would agree. So two knife tips of powder. Metric <laughs> knife tips. <laughs> okay, then I'll add two more. Still very pink. Very pink. It's pretty pink though. It's like a rose color now. Okay. It's deepening a little it bit is toward, deepening. It toward is. red. So now we're looking for four knife tips. Four more knife tips, up to eight knife tips, which eight metric knife tips we all know is the standard US knife tip. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Not red. No, no, not no, red. no, no, not red. Okay. Okay, there's clear, a clear progression there. There is a clear progression. Beet powder. This, it, <coughs> earthy. That smells delicious. <laughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> oh, okay. Beets are good for you. Good for brain and eye health, heart health, gut health, mood and vitality. Not sure what it's doing for my mood. Yeah. Okay, um, so we're gonna start with an eighth of a teaspoon uh, and build from there with this beet powder. You know what? Sugar can cover a multitude of sins. That is very deep red. It's like a brick red, yeah. Yeah. Same pinky kind of thing. Yep, pink. And also, this has red and like little black. Oh yes, it's got quite a, quite a few flecks in it. All right, now another eighth of a teaspoon to bring us up to a total of one fourth. Oh wow, that's earthy. That it's a very rosy color. Very, yeah. This reminds me of my grandmother. This is mauve. Mauve. Yeah. All right, so I'm adding another quarter teaspoon to bring us up to a total of half a teaspoon. It is very challenging to mix this. I can tell I'm not doing any yes. work. <laughs> it's just uh, extraordinarily uneven, yeah. It is intensifying the color. As we're adding more and more beets to it. Yes, all right. So now we add an entire half a teaspoon, which is two of my one quarter teaspoon spoons. <clears throat> the beet smell keeps wafting over yes, here. Yes, it does. And I wouldn't even classify that as beet smell. No, it's dirt. You want to pretend that you're somehow making healthy buttercream. <laughs> it's got butter, and it's got a little bit of sugar, and it's really got a lot of vegetables. What does smell have to do with taste anyway, right? They're basically unrelated. Unrelated? To yeah. Uh, I'm kind of nervous now yeah. about tasting that. It is not red. It is definitely intensified and uh, offensive, maybe the right, I don't know. That's with one teaspoon. One teaspoon of red beet. Beans. Root powder. Ooh, it's gritty. For 50 grams. So uh, it's inconvenient for this beetroot powder that it's next to the Americolor <laughs> that is really closer to really close to yeah. red. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this Americolor, this is clearly the winner, the deepest red. The deepest red. And now I, I say winner. Yes, I wouldn't probably ever color to that depth. Okay. Um, why? Why not? Red dyes in general seem to suffer, all of them seem to suffer from a bitter taste. And so this scares me. When we taste these, I'm very concerned that there will be an extraordinarily bitter aftertaste here. We've done this. We can let these sit for okay. time comparison, I think. We'll let them sit for a while. Okay. Um, and then shall we taste? Let's go see who we can wrangle into this. Okay. We're back and we found some helpers. Willing test subjects. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Tastes like butter. Tastes like sweet vanilla buttercream. Yeah, it tastes like, yeah. Mm -hmm. it has a little bitter aftertaste. Yeah. A little it's bit. Definitely not as sweet as that one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of, ooh, as it lingers on your tongue, it gets worse. Yeah. Uh huh. This is the Americolor that oh. got super <laughs> oh. saturated. It is so, so red. red. Oh, that's 
so gross. Okay. Oh! <laughs> it's fine until it's all gone, and then you're just left with the bitterness. Mm. Once the sugar's gone, it's over. I had to chew a little bit of it. Okay, so this is the Loran powder. Okay, that was more gritty. Mm -hmm. It is gritty. I noticed that when I scooped it. Like, I could mm -hmm. hear, like, the grains, like, <laughs> scratching the grains, like, up as I scooped it up. So oh, that was weird. Wait. Okay, this one is the natural red. Oh, that's gonna stick with you. Oh. oh, no. You can't outrun the beets. You can't outrun the beets no matter how much sugar's in your buttercream. Oh, wow. Well, I regret doing this. <laughs> uh, so thank you guys for your help. Thank you for taste testing. All right, we're back through the magic of editing. Different day, new clothes. It has been roughly 24 hours and all of our colors have changed. They have indeed. They're um, all more intense. Yes. Some more than others. Some more than others. Yeah, but even the, the lightest, the pinks of the McCormick still, uh, you know, are a deeper pink. It's true, it's yeah. true. Of course, the eight drops couldn't turn to red from its pink. Uh, this one, that is a extraordinarily vibrant red. Um, I mean, this one is true red, and this one has gone beyond. And then the Americolor, whoa, whoa. <laughs> It was vibrant yesterday with those eight drops. We knew eight drops was overdoing it in that 50 grams of icing because the drops are just so much bigger than the Wilton drops. Um, but this is burgundy now. This is beyond red. This is beyond red, really. The Loran powder, the color overall has intensified, but we can still see the little flecks of red, meaning that the dye didn't fully dissolve in there. There are still spots of powder in there that did not blend in. And then there's the, the beet powder, which is a beautiful color, but it's not red. No, it's not red, uh, nor is it edible. But I did wonder what would happen if we mixed the powder in with the dry ingredients of the buttercream. Now this is an American buttercream at its most basic form, just um, butter and powdered sugar. So I wondered if we mixed the powder in and with- And in its most complex form, it also adds beets. Just <laughs> in case. Never again. Okay. Um, never eating beet buttercream again. No. So do we have like a stand-in? So I thought we could try it with the Americolor brand powder and just see if um, there's a difference between the two brands. Okay, yeah, so to know whether or not this color is the Loran red, that's just what their powder is. Right. When we compare, or is it because it's a powder, that's what happens with powders when you try to use them with American buttercream. Right. So to test this, I've scaled down a buttercream recipe to minuscule amounts. I'm going to measure both at the same time. I'm going to use these two powders and include them with the powdered sugar prior to mixing them with the butter. Um, this would be like if you wanted to just make buttercream for one cupcake. Two thirds of a cupcake you might be able to ice with this. Um, it's our typical family midnight snack. <laughs> two thirds of a cupcake? <laughs> oh, two thirds of a single cupcake? <laughs> oh, I thought you meant two thirds of a of pan. all the cupcakes, yeah. yeah. So we've got equal butter, equal powdered sugar. Now I need to keep these somewhat distinct from one another. Um, I'm adding eight metric knife tips. Uh, this is the Loran red powder that we used yesterday. Of course, the real question will be, does this help get these powders to the actual red? Because in our test, it just didn't make it there. And just even upon inspection between the two of the powders. This one has a different tone than this one. Um, I'm not sure I would classify this one as maybe more blue and this one more orange. I'm going to whisk these together. So looking at these, again, this is the Loran, this is the Americolor. The Americolor is more vibrant, even mixed within the powdered sugar. Mm -hmm, definitely. That bodes well for what color will come out later, I assume. Well, this will be fun. It is definitely turning that butter red. This is most definitely not my favorite way to make buttercream. <laughs> this does this for you. You're welcome. Okay, that is looking very red. It's looking very red. Holy moly. I feel like this is fair to say, like, we now have enough information here to know. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> if you're making buttercream, this is not how I would recommend doing yeah, it. Yeah. And what I do not see are little speckles like we had before. 
Now it's time for the Loran powder. Yeah, that is definitely, definitely pink. I do feel like this is more intense than, mm -hmm. than yesterday's. I agree. So in this case, yes, it definitely mixes better when included with the dry ingredients. So our Americolor powder definitely rendered a more vibrant red. Um, it is a full red with the eight knife tips, that ever so scientific knife tip measurement. Metric knife tips. Metric knife yeah. tips. Um, and the Loran powder definitely fared much better with this method of mixing than with the method of just trying to dissolve that powder in the already mixed buttercream. It's much smoother, um, no little red f flakies and streaks in it. Um, so that's much better. Of course, the color is just not as vibrant as the Americolor. I think we need to taste these. Well, it doesn't have the vanilla in it, but oh, oh. there's that bitterness in the aftertaste. Mm. Mm. A little there. There's a little grit, mm -hmm. but I don't know how much more grit than just... Than regular just powdered sugar, powdered in, sugar a, yeah. in a... Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the Loran that we tasted. Now we can taste whereas, the... Whereas yesterday, spreading it, it was like... Yes. Like you could mm -hmm. hear it. For me, the Americolor is more bitter than the Loran. Wouldn't be so, okay, there it is. <laughs> Leave that bitterness. You know. You're only hurting yourself. You're only hurting yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's been another 24 hours, and the colors on both of these have definitely deepened. Yes, and I noticed that even though these two are made from the exact same powder in the same amount, eight metric knife tips, if you will, this color is significantly different from that one. The mixing method made a incredible difference on what can be achieved. This is all one solid color. This is speckled and just kind of pink. Even in the Americolor, this is technically a different color, but when you look at the detail in here, you can see this is all one solid color, and these all have just little bits of slight variation. So this was very informative. Let's do another experiment. So buttercream is something that you might like to dye, but you may also choose at some point to dye your cookie dough or a cake batter to make those things colorful as well. So the trick on those things is that there is a point that you can over mix a cake batter or a cookie dough, and then your cake would be tough or flat. So we wanna avoid mixing. With buttercream, you can just keep mixing until your heart's desire, until that color turns out smoothly. So another thing I wanna test with food dyes is what can we do to manage the overmixing part of blending in food coloring? Okay, so it looks like we have five different uh, food colorings again. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a mix of powder and gel and water-based in the McCormick. So yes. I get the McCormick is here, it's water-based. We'll try this out. We actually have red and blue, so I guess we're gonna make purple. Indeed. All right, so we're gonna see how these mix and then with that overmixing problem, hey, can you can you actually get this to mix into a purple? Um, same kind of situation here with the Wilton. This is gel based. Uh, also have red and blue. Gonna mix them together. Try to get purple. We'll see how well that does. Based on our last experiment, I expect that to be significantly deeper color. Uh, then we have an Americolor Regal Purple. Mmm, <laughs> aptly named. Uh, and this is just a purple dye uh, provided directly from the manufacturer in that color. So we'll see how well that stacks up against this basis of comparison here of how well does it mix. Gel dyes. It should be noted that Wilton, um, maybe even McCormick, I'm not sure about McCormick, but definitely Wilton would have a purple dye. We just don't happen to have it. So we're gonna do a little blending. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's test a few more things while we're here. <laughs> so then moving to the powders. So we have the Loran powder again. This time though, we have red, but we also have the blue. So we're gonna mix those and see how well they mix. And can you get a purple by mixing these kind of powders? Or will you end up with streaky red and blue? Yeah, and yeah. And then uh, we decided not to mix beets, um, and, but we do have purple sweet potato from Suncor, uh, which is a natural dye, and this is actually made, the ingredients, organic purple sweet potato powder. Uh, so the question here obviously being is how purple is it? And uh, you know, how does it taste? Does it impact the flavor of your food? Uh, and we'll find out. Let's give this one a go. Let's give the Americolor purple, start with a straight, simple one, uh, and let's get this party started. 
So I've actually done a little bit of prep work here. We're going to make cupcakes from my usual cake batter recipe, but I've divided it into quarters and we're gonna make five of them. So we're just doing this the simple, easy way. So I've never actually prepared my cake recipe in one quarter of the recipe before, uh, but rather than doing the mashing method like I did the buttercream, I'm going to go ahead and use my mixer. Um, it will be a very small batch in the bottom, so we'll see how this goes. With any of the liquid dyes, like the Americolor, the Wilton, the McCormick, I'm going to add it during the creaming stage of the butter, so during the, the wet stage. And with the powder dyes, I'm going to add them to the dry ingredients and add them at the dry ingredients stage. And we did confirm, we saw the dry ingredients, the powders definitely, when you're mixing them together in the dry bits, they right. do significantly better. That's true. So I have high hopes. Yes, me too. So I'm going to cream the butter and the sugar together. This is such a small amount in my mixer, it's unusual. Yeah, we're not really a quarter batch kind of family. <laughs> so I'm going to add two drops of this purple dye at this point. One, two, and a half. So when you mix dye in, um, in a cake batter, it will lighten when you add the flour, the other white ingredients. So you kind of want to make it pretty vibrant at this point. Um, so I will add two more drops for a total of four. So that did get more vibrant. Yep, definitely. All right. At this point in the recipe is when I would add the egg. Yeah, that, Looks that's liquidy. Great. Mm. <laughs> This is where I take one of my dry ingredients. Ordinarily, with a larger batch, I have a lot more flour, and I would add this flour in smaller amounts, probably about this much at a time. But I'm going to add about half of this at this point, fold it in. Definitely don't want to overmix. Because if you really just went to town on this thing and let it go, you would end up with kind of... You would end up with tough, maybe even flat cupcakes, and nobody wants that. There's the last of the flour. And milk. So you can see that the purple has gotten paler as we've added the white ingredients. Definitely. Yeah, that's purple. It is purple. Did you say that's Purple Mountain's Majesty? We'll set the rest of this aside. I've got to clean this up. I ordinarily wouldn't let this sit very long before I bake it, but I am gonna fill the other half of this pan with another batch. We're ready for the second batch. Okay, so this time we're gonna use McCormick. This is also a liquid, so we're gonna do it in the creaming stage, I believe is what it was called. And we had used four drops of the purple, so we're gonna just use two blue, two red. It's real easy to talk over the mixer. <laughs> uh, we're doing two drops of red two drops of blue. Say, hey, that's purple. It is indeed. Egg time. All right, the egg is fully blended. Let me see if there's any. Wow, anything. that stopped being purple. It did. It did stop being purple. It is now more grayish green. Yeah. Well, that, that egg did a number on it. Did. On it. it just. I mean, um, yeah, that was clearly not strong enough to overcome. No, to overcome egg and a bunch of... I mean, does it make sense to add more? We could. Would you like to? Because it's... Add two more drops of each? It's just... Just give it a fighting chance? Grage now. Is, it's not right. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> we got to make sure we don't overmix this. That's true, yes. We should really stop stirring, but... Okay, that is decidedly a bit more liquidy. It is. And definitely less purple. <laughs> Absolutely less purple. Comparatively, you can see this. This is a purple. <laughs> That's. This is. Grayish. Gray. Mm hmm. Brain matter. It's time for the third batch. We're what? using the Wilton gels, two drops of each. Theoretically, you could add this at the end and stir it in. If you were making cake layers of different colors, you would probably, rather than wanting to make quarter batches of cake, you might want to make one big batch divided out. But you would have to be very careful not to over stir it and change the texture of your cake. Two drops of red. That was a big two. That was a big two? So that is certainly more purple. It's actually more blue, blue. more of an indigo. 
both of those two and a half droplets. Oh, you, you got two and a half of blue and only two of red? Mm -hmm. Should we be fair and give it another red? Probably. Just it's a beautiful indigo color though. I like that color. Egg time. Oh, yeah, so let's see how this one survives the egg. Mm hmm That other one did not survive the yeah, egg edition. The McCormick could not survive. You know, I like that our mixer sounds like an old tractor. <laughs> well, it's an old mixer. <laughs> yeah, it's got character. It's served us well for almost 15 years now, so I think... <laughs> Small Mother's Day hint there. So, all right, I'm ready for the pan. Okay. Yeah, so this is significantly more similar to the Americolor gel. Mm hmm Certainly a vibrant color. Yeah. It's a totally different purple, but it's a vibrant. Oh. Yeah, it's totally, totally different purple, guys. <laughs> the totally. Americolor was more red. This oh. is more blue. Okay. All right. So this needs to go in the oven. Yeah, this can go in the oven. All right, this is the next batch. This is the first batch we're adding the dry powders to. These are the Loran powders. We're going to combine equal parts of the red and the blue Loran powders to the dry ingredients that I've already measured. So I'm gonna do an eighth of a teaspoon of red and an eighth of a teaspoon of the blue. Okay, so right away I'm seeing that this is has very a, blue. Is very blue. Who knows, when, it'll, when it mixes, the red may come through. All right, so then from here, the recipe goes the same as before, minus the addition of the liquid dye. The egg. We don't have to worry about the egg changing the color at this stage. No, it won't. Oh wow, without the dye, that is very yellow. It is very yellow. Now we can begin by adding about half the dry ingredients. Boy, that looks so blue. Yellow and blue makes? Uh, green, indeed, it's green. That's not even indigo, that is green. I'm going to add some more of the red. Was that another eighth? It was about a third of a fourth. It was a twelfth. Okay, it just kind of disappeared in here, so <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, that did not. Maybe by some sort of magic. That did not get any more red. <laughs> that is Confederate Army Gray. We need to get this over to Appomattox Courthouse right away. <laughs> oh, wow. It's the kind of thing that some people might be interested in putting on the walls of their house. Yes. That's it for the gray, I mean the purple. All right, this is our last batch of purple cupcakes. Purple sweet potato. Purple sweet potato natural food dye. I'm going to blend with the dry ingredients. Just go ahead and cut it straight across. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, dear. Do we need to smell? The beets, you didn't have to put your nose out in it. It smells really good, actually. It has a sweet smell. Yeah, yeah. That was not so bad. I'm using a full teaspoon of this purple sweet potato powder. That is a gorgeous color of purple. Just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that just kind of just disappears. It does kind of disappear. I wonder if we need to use more when we'll make a judgment call after my first edition. As we, as we incorporate yes. it. This is where the fun begins. Seeing, can it overcome the yellow? It's a complimentary color. It is, it goes very well with that creamy yellow and the pinky purple. <laughs> it's very red. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna say I we'll think, add another one to that. So total one and a half teaspoons. Total one and a half teaspoons. Gosh, that's just a gorgeous color. So that's a pretty color. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. It actually does remind me of sweet potato. It has thickened the batter a little bit. This one is sweet the potato. sweet potato. Veteran Army is, Gray. <laughs> <laughs> as, as the Loran. The Loran powders. We have made five, we, you have made five quarter batches of these different dyes, and they are definitely various shades of purple. These look very uniform. This one, this is the sweet potato. It is speckled now, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it has little blue speckles in it. And we had noticed that on the spatula, after we let it sit for a little bit, it the spatula had little blue speckles. I'm surprised to see that in something from a sweet potato. Of course, it's always a little different inside a cupcake than it would be on top. The sugar's on top brown, and so we wanna cut into these and take a look and see how they compare. So to remind you which is which, this is the one we started with. This was the four drops of Americolor Regal Purple. I'm not sure that I would call that Regal Purple. No, which is so fascinating because it started off so purple. It did. In the batter. Yes. But now that it's coming out, that's not very purple. It's not very purple. 
This is the McCormick, just equal drops of red and blue and... It's sad. It is sad. Uh, this was the third one that we made, the Wilton Gels. Super purple. Super purple. Remember that we did have a little trouble getting just one or two drops out at a time. We had a little inconsistency in the size of drops between these two bottles, and so um, right. it, it does lean heavily blue, but it's a, it's a super purple. Um, it's, it's much more of a blue purple than this one, which is a almost pink purple. This is the Loran powder. The blue entirely overwhelmed right. the red powder. And we saw that when we were putting in the dry ingredients. The flower turned clearly blue, and we added more red even, and it just could not. Could not compete with the blue. It's just blue. Um, I would call this indigo. It looks like denim. Okay, and this. This is the purple sweet potato color here. It came out of the bag with just a beautiful magenta -y purple color. It's definitely turned on the pinker side of purple. I would probably, if I didn't know that we were testing purples, I would say that this is a pink. This texture is a little different. This is more dense. I'm assuming that we've got some more starch or something from this sweet potato powder and it has changed the texture of the cake. I see tunneling in all of these, which tells me that they all got a little overmixed, and I suspect that's partially due to the, we did this quarter batches at a time, and not an ideal way to make cakes, but um, overall, these textures are pretty close to what I would normally expect, minus the tunneling there. I think the next thing that we need to do is taste it. Of course, when we tasted the reds, we could really taste the bitter dye flavor. I wouldn't expect that, given the proportions of dye that we put in here, but I won't be surprised if there's a taste difference in the sweet potato cupcake being that okay. it's got another food ingredient in it. Let's go get some volunteers and taste these bad boys. Let's do it. Okay, so we have some volunteers. All this right, first so this one is the, is the Americolor. One. Go for it. Tastes like a cupcake. <laughs> it's a little dry. Different products are gonna react differently to the different colors and how you add it and where you add it, when you add it part of actually what we're finding out about all right. this entire process here. The pH of the cupcakes themselves. This one's color is less good no, and definitely un unblended. Try the gray stuff, it's delicious. It tastes fine, I don't taste any chemical dye. Okay, the next one is Wilton Gel. It tastes different. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. I don't like that one. All right. Oh yes, I see some red dots. I see some blue dots. I see some blue dots too, but yep. also some red. I must be blind. Tastes like blue dye. Now this is the one made with purple sweet potatoes. I, I think the sweet potato has overwhelmed the vanilla. Yeah, this one doesn't bother me. It's a sweet potato cupcake, but not in a strong. Not in a weird sweet potato way. So none of these made us uh, gag. <laughs> That's true. So we're moving up in the world. <laughs> Thanks guys. Thank you. Wow, thanks for hanging in there for all of that. And if you've liked this, hit subscribe. Maybe hit the bell so you'll get notified whenever we put out new videos about kitchen stuff, whether they be experiments or otherwise. This was a lot of food dye. It really was. So what have we learned? First, the McCormick dyes are not very strong. That's true. I wouldn't use them in my baking, but you could use them for a science experiment. Okay, two, powder dyes need to go in in the dry phase of these recipes. When we added them in the dry phase, they blended very well and made a nice solid color. Three, all of these dyes get deeper over time. Yes, stop while you're ahead. Give it time to develop the color. Back it off a little and wait to see what color develops from it. And four, you gotta be careful how much dye you add because it does affect the taste. Yes, these dyes can add a bitterness to your baked goods that you do not want. And fifth, the natural food dyes, it's very important to match the flavor profile of the dye to the dish you're making. That's true. Beets, don't mix with buttercream at all. I won't do that again. But the sweet potatoes, I was surprised. I think if you didn't know they were there, you wouldn't recognize it. I think we could actually have some more fun playing with dyes in the future. Me too. I'm dying to try it.